Hi, and welcome again. Thanks for coming to GreyFoxFarms.com. We're going to be completing a tutorial on the Yallcam software setup to have remote access to your cell phone with your images when your birds come home. So go ahead and start up your Yallcam software. You notice here that for us it automatically pops up a preview window. In the preview window, it does indicate that... Um, the camera, which for us we've got in a shadow box, uh, you can't see it, but I just opened a box lid in the back to add some ambient light. You notice that the variables in there um, cause some screen distortion and so on and so forth. So we had just uh, put it in a box and keep the lid closed, so then that way all the activity that happens on the screen uh, is just simply coming from the uh, the green light. What you need to do is you come over here to the settings. You've got five different options here, file view, settings, window, and help. And we are going to click on the window and select motion detection. Here it'll give you uh, your various motion events. You could see here that uh, today we've had several trips as some of the birds have come home. Each one of these trips, uh, as you go through, you could single click on the particular item and see all the various uh, times in which you've had uh, successful readings and you could also clear them all as well you can see here on this one is when we open the box once it tripped the camera uh, but again uh, several different trips clicking on the action key under this uh, setting here there are two important parts uh, one not so important the play sound you could have that set it or not um, but most certainly the sent email has to be checked uh, and also the settings have to be adjusted. I'm going to go box by box. First off, in the uh, two box, it's got to be um, the email address set up by your cellular provider to receive um, multimedia messages. And for us, it's U.S. Cellular in northern Illinois. And the extension for that is the at mms.uscc.net. You'll have to either call your... Uh, service provider to find out what your extensions are or perhaps do some searching on the internet and typically it's your telephone number at mmsuscc.net your email I put in here from is harmsloft at gmail.com if you're not familiar with how to set up a, a free uh, gmail account just simply go to gmail.com and you could uh, sign up for a free account with uh, about seven gigs of web space the subject I indicated here just simply as B for bird. The message is H. And the reason why I only put in two indicators in here uh, and not a, a graphic uh, message is just simply because I want to eliminate the amount of data that has to get sent over the uh, the telephone network. So I did ask for it to attach the image. For me, the image um, would be the uh, photograph of the uh, of the screen as it changes. Uh, for Gmail and Gmail only, the SMTP servers are set here, smtp.gmail.com. Port is 587. It is important that you have this over here. I think the default port is 25. You have to have both these boxes checked, the encryption connection and password required. Of course, Harms Loft, which is the, uh, the name on the Gmail account, is listed there, and the password has been entered. Uh, you can adjust your JPEG quality here if for some reason you want to have a greater quality or a less quality. The higher the quality, the, the larger the picture. Um, typically, we found that 80% is satisfactory. And uh, also, we did indicate down here flood control. We reduced this time down all the way to one second, so then that way if you have one bird come in after another, uh, you'll be able to get those sequential images. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and select OK here. We're going to come back over here to the settings tab up at the top. We're going to select that. And in this box here, I'm just going to go ahead and use the preview in the background. In this box here, it's basically showing you that, okay, this is what the camera is looking at. This is motion detection. And you can kind of see a, a, a slight black line going around this area here with a little bit of black noise in here. And the black is indicative of this color here. I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to change that to red, maybe to have it show up a little bit better on the screen. You can see some red noise on here. And um, one of the first things you want to set here is motion detection. It says motion detection is either in the entire image or in the defined area. 
if you had set it for the the entire image, the clock as it runs down here, as it changes, is going to be taking a photograph once every second, every time it picks up the change, as far as the uh, motion detection is concerned. So what we did was we defined an area, and as you select this box here, a define area box pops up, and you can see that we have just indicated a red rectangle around the information that we want to change. So when the log information changes, or your bird information here changes, uh, of course in the center it's going to change, and then you also see that um, that uh, the date and or the correction of the time here is going to change. So uh, it says here press the mouse and drag the button down to define the motion detection area. You would click here and drag off in this section here. So I'm going to just go ahead and select OK for that. And uh, it also has a tab here to enable motion detection. Um, if you do that, uh, it'll give you some uh, indicators here as to the amount of uh, information that's being uh, sent through here. If I were to open the box right now, uh, this particular um, screen would notice that the light had entered into the box and, and make a change uh, and then also set into action uh, the preset definitions that we have here. It would send an email, it would play a sound, or it might save a file or FTP upload if, if those are the things that we had. So. I'm going to disable that, but I'm also going to show you under the settings, the sensitivity is set at 90%, the tolerance at 20 and when I open this box, I'm going to move the mouse over here, but when you open the box, you're going to see that as things change, um, as the ambient light enters in there, it shows on the screen the changing areas, and you could also see where the uh, mouse is, is flashing, uh, you could see how the sensitivity picks up there, and each time that red bar shows up, both in the top and in the bottom, that means that an event has taken place. So um, that's something to take into consideration.